here who could have this disease, not have it, and, and I got it. I've had people move away from me on elevators, you know. Um, I've had kids cry when they see me. Uh, as soon as I get out of my car, people are staring at me. That's all day, all the time. That's not something that is like a light switch you turn on and off. It happens all the time. But it is a disease that forces you to, you know, really examine yourself, and it's like psychological warfare. Also on the Fox Beat, tonight among those in attendance, Eminem, who recently... I'm an anchor, entertainment Lake, reporter for Park Fox 2, and because I'm on TV here, I have to wear makeup all the time. It straight up sucks like oh. That was my last hit. <laughs> Doing my job and having this disease, the reporter in me knows that there's an answer if I keep digging. Why is there not a cure? I want to repigment. I mean, I want to look like I used to look. So I went to a, a holistic doctor, and I've gone to a bunch of naturopathic and holistic doctors to try to address problems from the inside out. I have a regimen that I've started that I think bring back pigment. This is Paba. This is cod liver oil, beta TCP. This is called pigmentum, recolor neem, and it's just a plant. This is the iuretic medication. This is the cream that goes with it. The old me is like, I would never be one of those pill guys. How far would you go to cure yourself? I know it's possible. So I'm very excited about the possibility that I could fully repigment. This is the pyritic cream that I use. I put it on my face and ears and stuff. Three times a day I take supplements just to help everything out. I am getting ready to apply my makeup so I can go to work today. It takes me about 15 minutes to put it on. But you start off with the vitiligo areas first. And then you blend the rest in. So I'm like about 40% without pigment now. It could get much worse. One day, I may stop wearing dark makeup and flip it to light makeup. So I'm not really wanting to go down that route. I hope that doesn't happen. And there it is. We're gonna keep you in the studio for the morning show because we got all idle stuff and movement stuff. Okay. Makeup comes off when I eat. At least one of them I need to get done for tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. Uh. Okay. Does my face look okay? Is something missing? I, I was looking in the monitor. Look. I'll be right back. About ten. Here we go. American Idol season eight is over and the tour begins for the contestants. But what about those judges? Sometimes when, you know, when I sneeze, when I have to wipe my face, the makeup, it comes off and I have to do touch-ups throughout the day. So we're here at the station and I'm gonna talk to the makeup specialist from Cover FX about this new makeup that I wanna try. It'll help it stay a little better. I'm gonna give it a shot. Why don't you have can, a seat? I can sit here, yeah. So, how is it going? You know, when I scratch or something, it might, or especially blow my it nose. It moves a little it bit. It comes, comes off a little bit. Okay, using a setting powder with it, or, you know, a makeup primer underneath mm -hmm. it. Th those products are really the seal to keep the makeup in place. Okay. So that it doesn't look shiny or oily. Mm -hmm. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, what are you thinking? It's really cool that it's gonna help it stay on longer because, uh, our newscast is going longer. <laughs> <laughs> How many people do you think you, you work with who have vitiligo? Uh, probably about 50 or 60. Do you find people who have a, a significant amounts of pigment come back or just little bits? Some of them just recover completely. Theirs is not as advanced as yours. Right. They get little ones here and there. You know, I think I'm gonna completely repigment. And you know right. what, if you continue to be that way, you're gonna find exactly what you're looking for. See, see how it's creeping in right there? Right there, see that little edge? 
I mean, I stare at myself all the time, so I noticed these last night. Eamon hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, you guys are ready, all set up. I'm going in to do a little photo shoot. A friend of mine, Mike Shore, who did the pictures in my book, uh, we're gonna document where the vitiligo is now so we can kind of see the progression. But I'm excited about this one. I tried a little, a little something with uh, the things that I think would help repigment, and it, and it worked. So really? the pigment started coming in pretty, like freckling in. Oh, that's so, awesome. Uh, I want to be able to look and see where it's coming back. Right. Then maybe again, four months or two months, or if when I get significant repigment. Yeah, that's what you should do. Very cool. All right, you want to so, do it? Yes. Why don't you uh, turn your head and look toward the camera? You want to take a look at some of these? Sure. Look at how much he has here in 2007. So that's 07 back. To 2009. Wow. Really wow. two-thirds of it, really. Um, here's some chest. Look at that. How much would you say? How, what percentage is gone? I said around 35 or 40 percent. Um, it's 55. It's a lot. Yeah. More, yeah. Than, more than 50? Yeah. 55 percent gone? 60? Yeah. It's gotten worse before it's gotten better. The changes, eye-opening a little for me because I, I couldn't, I can't see everywhere, so I got to see things I hadn't seen before. And it gave me more fuel to remain vigilant with this diet. No matter what anybody else says, it's a possibility that I could fully repigment. I'm telling you, I believe it. How Thank you, you doing? so good much for meeting me. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Good, man. good. All right. Ready for some lunch? Okay. Yes. I like the baby spinach salad. Skip the pecans and can I have the walnuts? I don't want the candied pecans. No pecans, walnuts, what's that? Yeah, and I still want um, tomatoes, onions, and do you have black olives? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have been following a, a very strict diet. It's 85% vegetables and fruit raw, and 15% cooked, one cooked meal a day. That's awesome. And part of the treatment that I'm doing is a lotion that I put on this uh, Indian medicine. It's called Ayurvedic medication, so I'm trying that as well. Hopefully, I'll do all these things, and the pigment will come. OK. You had it since you were three? Since, since I was three years since old. Since you were three. And, and uh, when I, my mom, she took me to uh, a doctor and they knew nothing about this at all. Right. And the uh, gentleman took me and laid me on something like a cookie sheet. Mm -hmm. And they slid me under these bright lights, mm -hmm. slid me in there, mm -hmm. and they would bake me, try to bake my body to Make turn the pigment, me, pigment come to come back. And the uh, only thing happened is that I would get so hot Right. It would blister my skin, right, and they would right. pull me out and put oil and ointments on me and slide me back right, in. Right. And it took pictures of me to see before and after, right. and and all of these things, and none of that worked, none of that helped. So um, my mom took me from doctor to doctor, and everybody said, you just have pigment of the skin, don't have any pigment there. Right. Has it progressed any for you? Because for me, it's gotten worse yes. uh, lately. I've had... Um, very little, very, very little progression in the last five years, I would say. Mm. And, and that was like around in this area. He kind of spread it open a little right. bit more. Right. I have to tell you, okay. the, the journey has been incredible. You know, I've been trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know, me being the reporter that I am yes. and yes. documenting all the different things that I've done. And yes. When I um, find success, I'll spell it all out. I just got back from California. Uh -huh. I saw a friend of mine, he had a little child with him and sitting in a, in a little high chair. And I said, hey, that little boy screamed as if he had seen a ghost. Wow. Oh. Isn't that the toughest thing? It man? hurt me so bad. I almost, they say, I forgot. And when I got home, I looked in the mirror, I said, I don't blame the child. You don't see a person with vigilitis every day. Yeah, a lot of people are still hiding, you know? Yeah. They're still afraid to come out the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No one in the world that have vigilitis 
that would hear of a cure and would not go after it. It doesn't matter if I'm if I'm 75 or 80 years old. If I hear of a cure, I'm going to get it. I'm going to try it. I'm documenting it as much as possible because I know how skeptical people can be. If I can find my way out of it, um, we all can.